Committee Room 30. Okay, members, um, I declare this meeting of the Committee for Communities open to the public and welcome members to the meeting. Um, I'm going to then move straight on to item agenda one, which is apologies. I have apologies from Mark Durkin, from Sinead Innes, from Fran McCann and Carol McKillen. Um, that, I think, is all of our apologies. Not aware of any others. There isn't anybody else to apologise for. We'll move on then straight into agenda item number two, which is Tart Chair President's Business. Members, I need to draw some matters to your attention to a member the Speaker has issued to all committee chairpersons. It's in your tabled items. I also need to notify you that members will be aware that from 9pm on Wednesday, the 18th of March 2020, the Speaker and Assembly Commission has restricted access to the building to essential business users only. That means that the general public will not be permitted access to the building and to the public galleries in chamber and in committees. Subject to the usual procedures in relation to closed sessions, any public sessions of the committee will continue to be broadcast live for the public to view. Whilst this is not ideal, the Speaker and Assembly Commission has taken this decision in the interest of public safety and procedures will continue to be reviewed on a daily basis. I then move on, members, to item number three, which is the draft minutes. Can I refer members to page five of your meeting pack? Draft minutes of the twentieth, or sorry, the twelfth of March, twenty twenty. Um, are members content uh, to with the minutes as drafted? Agreed. Great. Thank you. Move on then. Agenda item number four is matters arising. Um, can I advise members that the committee's strategic planning away day scheduled for tomorrow, the nineteenth of March, in the Skenos Centre will be postponed. Um, until committee can have further discussions uh, about its forward work programme. All agreed? Great. Agreed. Great, thank you. Moving on then to agenda item five, which is a ministerial briefing. Members will know that the minister was due to attend today's meeting to brief us on the legislating relating to social size criteria um, or social size sector criteria. Within the last hour, the minister has contacted us to say she has to attend an urgent meeting and cannot therefore attend. Of course, given the circumstances, this is entirely understandable, and instead she has provided us with a written statement on these matters. Um, can I suggest that if members have any questions to read in that statement, um, we then forward them back to the clerk, but we're going to open it up quickly for discussion. We have a very limited time frame today, so if members can be um, succinct with what they want to say. I just want to start by saying um, we, we took time earlier before meeting started to read the, the minister's um, statement to us. While it doesn't go into a lot of detail, I think we all admit to that. Um, she has assured us that, um, albeit the legislation is sitting ready to go, um, uh, there are, are still is not a time frame for when that legislation is going to go through the House, but she has assured us that no one's payment will stop, that the payments will continue. And I think that's an important message that we need to put out to the public. That the, not to be fearful at this time when there are many other things to be fearful about, that uh, the, the, the payments will continue um, on this. Um, I, well, uh, first of all, I know we have other questions to do with the, the, the COVID 19. If we could first of all look at the bedroom, uh, the bedroom tax stuff and any questions that any members here want to put forward, we will be taking note and we'll get those forwarded through to the Minister uh, later on today. So, members, open to you. Andy and then Kelly. Yes, sir. Um, I suppose, obviously, it's not ideal circumstances that we're, we're under and we understand the pressure of the Minister, and, and I will keep my comments succinct. Um, firstly, I would like to sort of seek an explanation as to why we haven't seen the introduction of the mitigation payments thus far, uh, and also I'd like to understand how these payments will be commuted to, to individuals. We need to better understand how the payments will be made to ensure that nobody is, is impacted by um, this legislation not being brought forward in respect of the bedroom tax and the other the other provisions in terms of the extension of the mitigations. Okay, thank you, Andy. Kelly? Thank you very much. I think we welcome the fact that there's a commitment there from the Minister and the Department to continue on those mitigations that are unique to Northern Ireland. Um, this is a scrutiny committee and there are a few things just I'm a little bit concerned about. You know, we're, we're assuming that the Budget Act, which isn't in place yet, will, will allow this to happen. I'm not entirely certain what the legal basis is for making the payments. While they're very welcome and we absolutely need them for people, um, I wouldn't mind that um, just being clarified as how that is taking place. Yeah. Right. Agreed. 
Uh, members, anything else they want to say around this issue? Or if not, we'll move on then to other issues um, relating to uh, this department and this committee. Um, I know I have certainly a couple I want to add. Again, I'm going to be very quick about it. Um, I, I want the question asked um, around our jobs and benefits offices. I got a phone call today from Trevor Clark's office to say that the, the jobs and benefits office in Antrim, people are still walking in and out of it. And there's concern there from, um, from the people that work in that. Um, I think we need an answer sooner rather than later on how the Minister intends to go forward with that. Um, the second thing I want to ask then is around new claimants. Um, will they have the, the, the disregard, you know, or will they have to wait that length of time for benefits to start? Um, what, are, what are they doing about that? Also about discretionary payments, we need that nailed down as well. And thirdly, um, I want to ask about those who rent of the housing executive. We know that there's measures coming in place to do with people with mortgages. Um, I know there will be an overall um, a, a, a executive decision will have to come around private rental, but this department and this uh, that we scrutinise, um, they are in charge of the housing executive, which has many people that pay part or full rent. Um, just how do they intend to handle that? And will those people that find themselves in financial difficulties who rent off the housing executive um, have any comfort there uh, as to what the department are doing on that? So they're sort of my, my top three at the moment. I might come back, but I want everybody to get a chance. So I have Andy Kelly, then Johnny. Yeah, sure. And, and indeed, I would echo um, the comments that you've made. Um, also, and I highlighted it before we end the open session, that I, I feel it would be useful for the Minister, and indeed uh, it could be a theme that all departments could take, a single point of contact for elected reps. I, I know we're all being contacted uh, and inundated by constituents as we see measures being announced by the Chancellor and other departments as to how that will affect certain individuals in respect of how uh, benefits, uh, small businesses, etc. So a single point of contact for all elected reps and um, that that information can be disseminated down onto the ground to allay some of the concerns and the fears in relation to how individuals are going to be impacted by the whole COVID-19 situation. Also, I would like us to look at a committee how that we can play a more proactive approach in supporting the Minister in terms of forward planning and contingency planning. Um, I know the Speaker had mentioned in, in the Chamber it's not business as usual in, in, in its entirety, uh, and we need to adopt that approach. You know, whilst you know we're going to be debating motions and, and, and ordinary day member motions, but we need to be looking at how we can get legislation to support all of our constituents through the Chamber, and the committees can best support ministers in bringing forward the required measures to support our constituents on the ground at this unprecedented time. Thank you, Andy. Kelly? Thank you, Chair. Um, just, there's a few things. Um, just going back to the Minister's statement in the last paragraph where it says that she'll be making announcements on various measures shortly. It would have been helpful if they had been provided to the committee even an indication of, of her thoughts on that. Um, we still need to be able to scrutinise some of these things and while we haven't reviewed the mitigation um, payments going forward, um, I don't know whether that impacts on our, on our thinking going forward. Um, the other thing is that she mentions that she's engaging with the advice sector tomorrow. Whatever's being provided to the advice sector surely should be cir circulated to MLAs and, and particularly this kit committee, so I'd ask maybe for that to happen. It also mentions they're working closely with the appeals service. Um, some of, pe of the people who go forward for appeals, in particular with PIP, um, are some of the most vulnerable people um, who, ha who would be required now after the Prime Minister's um, announcement to self-isolate. So my concern would be you have 12 months and then your, your benefits change after that. We are going to see a massive amount further delays in appeals. And how is that going to work? But finally, um, this morning I was with the benefits office, having just found out that, that a local business was planning to lay off 40 members of staff. And, and I went into the benefits office to see if there was the support they could go down and speak to those staff whenever they hear the announcement. And the Social Security staff been very careful and said that they are no longer doing face-to-face -face meetings in Newton Arts and everything would be going to phone, which we can understand because of the, the crisis with the, um, C C19. But my problem is the people, the beneficiaries, the new people coming onto the system have not got a clue where to turn to. Um, and it's a very confusing thing. Um, I think we need to ensure that we have an appropriately resourced social security system. So the jobs and benefits office, if they go down, or their staff are going down, um, who's going to handle this? Because that is the next um, pressure point in our system, will be those jobs and benefits offices. 
I know, and I think you're absolutely right. It would have been helpful to have a list of things. The minister was on, um, I think it was uh, breakfast on Good Morning Ulster yesterday and was able to give a list of things on the radio. That would have been helpful for us to get that list in committee today. Um, I, I, I remember some of it and parts of it I don't remember because I was doing things at the time. But, um, uh, you know, are we going to be diverting staff within the department, should they need to, into uh, those sort of that sort of call centre? Um, type scenario which will be required absolutely so I think there are good points that you make um, that, that those phones are manned that that help is there that people are given the information when they require it and we also as MLAs as Andy has said we need that information as well because quite often the first point of protocol will be our offices um, in order to help people so I, I think there's a lot of questions there and you're quite right it would have been helpful to have had that brief that was given to Radio Ulster yesterday and I think chair just to just to finish on that one um, today if it hadn't have been for myself going into that jobs and benefits office they wouldn't have known that there was 40 people going to be hitting them later on today and tomorrow morning um, I think that there needs to be some sort of information out to tell businesses when they are faced with this situation how to help their people and by providing better communications numbers and so on so that our jobs and benefits offices are um, ready for that for an increased spike um, whenever those are those businesses are laying people off just just further that very quickly chair i know people are being encouraged to uh, avail and make the call yep. as service because obviously each individual's circumstances will be unique uh, and there may be certain elements of the measures that the Minister has announced that we, we haven't seen um, that may be unique to them and may fit their, their certain criteria. Um, so it's imperative that the make the call system is being uh, backfilled as well to ensure yep. that that service can continue and, uh, and address the increased number of people uh, and maybe now is the time to get that out there. I know you had mentioned in our previous committee meetings about the uh, promotion of Make the Call. It's maybe a time to look at further promoting that um, around the social media channels, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Good point. Johnny? Thank you, Chair, and I would echo your comments in the introduction in relation to um, having protection for our staff members in relation to the Jobs and Benefits Office who are going to be needed more than ever. Uh, extraordinary times calls for ex uh, extraordinary measures, and, and it's true when the assemblies not business as usual, this committee can't be either. Um, contingency and emergency planning, we must play our full part in helping this uh, department see through the worst of this. Uh, we've already heard some absolute horror stories in relation to mass layoffs. That's unfortunately only going to get worse as time develops. Uh, I don't think, uh, I understand why the Minister's not here today as in relation to uh, pressing meetings in relation to COBRA or etc or whatever it may be. but. It is so important that communication is fluid with this committee because we're only going to get through this if we do so together. So I would say that it is important for the Minister, as soon as as, as is uh, available, to come before the committee and to uh, further develop on her COVID-19 response in relation to her department because we have all questions coming from our constituents, so I'm very concerned. In particular, I'm concerned about the number of people that are going to be accessing um, the in relation to claiming benefits, uh, in relation to uh, redundancies. Um, I'm concerned about that influx. How are we going to control that uh, from a departmental level and ensure that um, it's almost like a virtual uh, jobs and benefits office as opposed to uh, face to face? So I'd be keen to hear more in relation to that. Something else that I've been very, I've had a lot of constituents alarmed with in relation to those that are of, of vulnerable status, uh, and particularly pregnant women. Uh, a, a lot now, they don't know whether they should self-isolate, continue to work, etc. It's For some, it's a matter of putting bread on the table or uh, protecting their own health. So I think the Minister needs to issue clear advice and guidance in relation to that. Um, so just in general, um, Chair, it's, it's now important, more important than ever that we pull together, but we need that flow of, com uh, of information from the Minister's department, and we can play our part to help where, where necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Um, members, I, anybody else, any other further questions they want us to send through um, from this committee to the Minister? Um, if you think of something throughout the day, I'm sure that's perfectly acceptable um, for us to be able to do that. Um, we want to play our part, as you said. We want to um, make sure that we, reassure, we want to reassure people out there um, that we, we are playing our part in this and supporting um, the, the, the Minister in all that she has to do. 
and, and also supporting our executive in general because a lot of these decisions will be executive decisions and we're very much it's a, a, there's a, a, a collective responsibility there as an executive. Um, so if members have nothing further to say on that issue, we can then move on to our next agenda item, which is which is an important item also. We'll move on, on to agenda item six, which is SR 2020-32, the statutory sick pay general coronavirus amendment regulations Northern Ireland 2020. Members, the information on this uh, from the department begins at page 13 of your meeting pack. Um, members, because of the urgency to ensure that people who are self-isolating will be entitled to statutory sick pay, this SR was made on the 12th of March and came into operation on the 13th of March. As noted in the depart department's paper, this is in breach of the 21-day rule, but I think in the circumstances that is certainly understandable. Do members have any objection to the rule having been made? No objections, members? Okay. I'll then put the question rather, that... Rather than objecting, Chair, I think we'd be supportive. Yeah, we should be, absolutely. I'll put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2020-32, the statutory sick pay, general coronavirus amendment regulations, Northern Ireland 2020, and subject to the examiner's statutory rules report, has no objection to the rule being made. Okay, members, we'll move on then to agenda item seven, which is any other business. Do members have any other business they want to bring up at this stage? Oh, okay. Um, just before I finish, um, can I thank members for coming in today um, for this urgent meeting? We know we were on a very tight time scale and we have another committee about to come through the door. So thank you very much. I'll move on now to agenda item eight, which is date, time and location of the next meeting. And that will be next week, the 26th of March, 10 a.m. in room 29. Thank you, members. Hey, committee room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30.